general about science, technology, and ethics for the past 10 years. Okay. Uh, and I became interested specifically in issues relating to intellectual property, to the uh, use of um, government-sponsored monopolies in, in, in uh, promoting innovation uh, through patents and copyrights, and specifically in the problem that I came to be aware of when I was learning about the Human Genome Project, and that is the patenting of human genes. I became uh, concerned about this, first of all, when I realized that there was a large scientific community that was opposed to this. The history of this is interesting because if it, the process of patenting genes, it dates back maybe about 20 years, but there's a really important historical event during the Human Genome Project that um, uh, I think is interesting to, to revisit, and that is that uh, James Watson, who was co-discoverer uh, with uh, Wilkins, Franklin, uh, Crick uh, uh, on uh, the structure of DNA, um, Watson was in charge of the Human Genome Project in the U.S. Um, it was an international effort, and the, the idea was to be able to map the human genome so that we could develop um, cures and treatments for um, uh, genetic diseases and whatnot. Well, Watson, uh, while he was head of the Human Genome Project, became aware that a, a young researcher in one of his labs, uh, Craig Venter, um, was interested in patenting genes as they found them. Um, and some of the other people in the, uh, uh, the U.S. version of the Human Genome Project thought, yeah, that was a pretty good idea. And they went ahead and started filing patents on human genes that they discovered in the process of this publicly funded human genome project. And Watson then spoke up about it and said, uh, this can't happen. And then Watson was fired from, from the Human Genome Project by his boss. Um, so th this, is a, this is a fascinating story to me because here it is, the guy who helped discover uh, the structure of DNA, who is opposing the patenting of human genes and loses his, his position as head of the Human Genome Project in the U.S. because of this opposition. What good reason do they have to do this? To make a lot of money. When you get a patent on a, on a gene, you control its use. So a patent is not an ordinary property right. And I, I should make clear, I support ordinary property okay. rights. I distinguish between physical goods and land, which I think are properly possessable and ownable, and ideas and other sorts of things which are not uh, properly ownable. And in, in my book, um, I distinguish between types of things which are, I think, commons, which cannot be owned, which cannot be enclosed, which cannot be in any sensible way uh, um, uh, kept as a monopoly uh, from other sorts of things. And the reason you get an intellectual monopoly, which is what intellectual property is, it's the government giving to some party a privilege to use something for a period of time to the exclusion of all others, what you get is a right to prevent others from using that thing to their benefit, or for anything. So getting a patent on a gene is enormously uh, important if you want to, say, keep others from using something they might discover about that gene to make a new treatment. Uh, or more, uh, more recently, the, the big controversy is over testing. So if you own the gene, you control its use in any, any medium. Uh, and that's exactly what's happening uh, with genes. So what we know about the human genome is its general structure. Um, and scientists are still discovering uh, what genes do what things in the body. So th this is an ongoing process. It's a very complicated landscape. Um, what they really want to do is uh, profit. This is the, the impetus behind intellectual property. Yeah. Um, and, and, and by getting this government-sponsored monopoly over a thing, uh, like a gene, uh, pharmaceutical companies are able to monopolize uh, testing and, and products related to uh, that particular gene. And there's a lot of money at stake.